A brand new Boeing 787 crashes, killing over 240 people, and just days later the FAA announces there's no need to ground the fleet. Sound familiar? It should. After Lion Air 610 and Ethiopian 302, the FAA waited until public pressure forced its hand. Now they say there's no systemic flaw, they're monitoring the situation and working with Boeing and GE. But to many, it feels like deja vu. Are we witnessing true regulatory confidence or quietly repeating the same mistakes? And if we are, what does that say about how much we've really learned since the MAX? Let's find out in this episode. At its launch, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner was sold to the world as a revolution in aviation. Lightweight composite fuselage, next-gen electrical systems, unmatched fuel efficiency, this was supposed to be the future of long-haul travel. Over 100 aircraft delivered, billions invested, and an entire brand image built around innovation. But behind the marketing glow, the cracks, quite literally, have been there from the start. Back in 2013, the Dreamliner's lithium-ion batteries caught fire. Not once, but multiple times, forcing a worldwide grounding. That should have been a wake-up call, but it was treated like a fluke. Fast forward to 2020 and 2021, and Boeing halts deliveries after discovering gaps in the fuselage joins, gaps that, if left unaddressed, could compromise the entire airframe over time. For years, the FAA flagged quality control problems at Boeing's South Carolina plant. This wasn't a one-off slip, it was a pattern. And then came Sam Salapur, a Boeing engineer on the inside, sounding the alarm that things were worse than anyone thought. According to him, critical parts of the 787 were improperly shimmed, essentially forced together in ways that could create long-term structural fatigue. He even claimed some workers jumped on components to make them fit. If true, this isn't just bad practice, it's an engineering nightmare. Salapur brought this directly to the FAA. The agency confirmed an investigation, but never shared the results. And now, in the wake of a deadly crash, we're told there's still no cause for concern, no design flaw, nothing systemic. It's hard not to ask. If this aircraft was built on such a shaky foundation, how can anyone be so sure now? The FAA says it's confident in the 787. Their official stance? There's no clear evidence of a systemic design or production issue. They cite the aircraft's track record. Over 680 million passengers flown, millions of flight hours logged, and strong performance across hundreds of global airlines. From that viewpoint, grounding the fleet based on a single incident, before conclusive black box analysis, is seen as premature. But here's the problem. That was the exact same rationale used with the 737 MAX. After Lion Air 610 went down in October 2018, the FAA said it was an isolated incident. Then Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed less than five months later. Even then, the FAA insisted the plane was safe, until it was literally the last major aviation authority in the world to ground it. The United States didn't lead on safety. It followed, kicking and screaming. And the cost? 346 lives, and a massive loss of public trust. That's what makes this moment so unnerving. A Dreamliner crashes, and the FAA's first instinct isn't caution, it's reassurance. It's to defend the aircraft before fully understanding what happened. They say there's no pattern, but what exactly qualifies as a pattern? One crash is a tragedy. Two crashes were a warning. How many cracks, battery fires, Structural fatigue concerns and whistleblower alarms does it take before something is considered systemic? And this leads to the elephant in the room. Why hasn't the FAA released the results of its earlier investigation into the 787? When Boeing engineer Sam Salepour blew the whistle on what he called dangerously flawed assembly practices, the FAA opened a probe. But they never published any findings, no report, no conclusions, just silence. Now, after a fatal crash, that silence doesn't look like due process. It looks like omission. And we can't ignore the larger structural issue here. The FAA and Boeing have a deeply intertwined relationship. 
Since the 2000s, Boeing has been allowed to self-certify many of its aircraft components under a controversial system called ODA, Organization Designation Authorization. Essentially, Boeing employees can act with FAA authority. Critics have called it the fox guarding the henhouse. And after the MAX scandal, that system was supposed to be reformed. But has it? Because right now, it still feels like Boeing gets the benefit of the doubt and passengers get the risk. So when the FAA says, we see no need to ground the 787, the question isn't just, is the plane safe? It's, can we trust that this statement is based on independent judgment? Or is it coming from the same culture of risk-blind bureaucracy that failed us before? And honestly, if the public isn't sure anymore, can you blame them? While the FAA holds its ground, international regulators aren't standing still. India, where the recent crash occurred, acted swiftly. Its Directorate General of Civil Aviation, DGCA, launched immediate inspections of all Dreamliners operating in Indian airspace. Japan, home to two of the largest 787 fleets, all Nippon Airways and Japan Airlines, ordered rapid internal safety checks. These weren't symbolic moves. They signaled real concern. Because while the FAA speaks of confidence, others are choosing caution. And that contrast is telling. Across Europe, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, ESA, has so far refrained from imposing restrictions, but it has made it clear they're watching closely. China's CAAC, still notoriously wary of Boeing after the MAX crisis, has taken a quiet but firm stance of heightened surveillance. In short, the FAA may not see urgency, but the rest of the world isn't quite so convinced. Then there's the public reaction and it's been fast and unforgiving. Aviation forums, mainstream media, and social networks are buzzing with familiar frustration. Major headlines aren't pulling punches. FAA repeats Max playbook. Trust eroded again. Is Boeing too big to ground? The stock market responded too. Boeing's shares took a visible hit following the crash and the FAA's announcement, while its CEO conspicuously skipped the Paris Air Show a move many interpreted as damage control disguised as a scheduling conflict. And hovering over all of this is Sam Salapur's name, again. His whistleblower testimony has now gone viral, amplified by media outlets and aviation influencers. Clips of him describing Boeing workers jumping on parts to make them fit are circulating with millions of views. His warnings, once dismissed by some as overblown, are now being seen through a very different lens. After all, he didn't just point to a general culture problem. He specifically flagged structural flaws on the 787. This is why trust matters so much, because even if the FAA is right, even if the investigation ultimately finds that the crash wasn't caused by a manufacturing defect, the public no longer assumes that by default. The benefit of the doubt is gone. And here's the chilling truth. Once trust in aviation oversight is broken, even the best engineering can't fly above it. So what happens now? As of this moment, the full investigation into the crash is just beginning. The preliminary report could take up to 30 days. Investigators have already recovered the flight data recorder, but the cockpit voice recorder is still missing, possibly damaged in the wreckage. Without both, answers will come slowly, but experts are already narrowing in on a few key areas. The aircraft's flight control surfaces, electrical systems, engine behavior, and yes, potential flaws in assembly or structural integrity. Depending on what the data reveals, the FAA might issue targeted airworthiness directives, specific fixes or inspections for particular components. But if international regulators lose confidence first, we could see a repeat of what happened with the MAX. Other countries stepping ahead of the FAA, grounding planes, or requiring extra inspections before the U.S. does anything. That would be a devastating look for an agency already accused of moving too slow. And if Salapur's claims are substantiated, if the Dreamliner really was assembled under pressure, with shortcuts and silence, then Boeing isn't just facing a technical issue. It's facing a reputational crisis on the scale of, or worse than, the max. Insurance payouts, legal action, fleet reviews, shareholder revolt, it's all on the table. In a post-max world, Boeing doesn't get a second pass. But the FAA has something even bigger on the line, credibility. Because this moment is a test. 
not of aircraft design, but of institutional independence, of whether the agency that's supposed to protect the flying public still acts with integrity, or whether it's become too entangled with the industry it's meant to regulate. And this is where we leave it to you. Would you feel safe flying a 787 right now? Do you believe the FAA is acting on hard data or just protecting Boeing again? Let us know in the comments, because this isn't just about a plane. It's about whether the people in charge of our safety are actually doing their job or just pretending they are.